Nobody really thinks about sloppy joes. They come together out of convenience. You've got some ketchup, ground beef, maybe a little vinegar on hand, and you end up with a sloppy mess. But we here at America's Test Kitchen know that everything can be made better because we think about food. And speaking of better, Ella's here and she's gonna tell us why we should improve on sloppy joe. That's right, some of the sloppy joes of the past have been known to be highly oversweetened and typically fall flat in flavor after that. Right. Not to mention, they rarely stay in the bun, which is yeah. why we call them sloppy joes. Right. Uh, but today we're gonna make it a lot more manageable. Okay. Okay, and we're gonna start with one pound of 85% lean ground beef. In the test kitchen, we've tried lots of ways to enhance this beef. We've cooked it in sauce, but that just made it pebbly and dry. Mm -hmm. The solution to that, though, is to make a slurry of one tablespoon of water and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay. This slurry enhances the pH of the beef, and it keeps the proteins from binding together too fast, too soon. Gotcha. And we're just gonna pour it over the meat. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. We don't really need a lot. I'm also gonna add to this a half a teaspoon of table salt and give it a stir. All right. So seasoned and it's gonna hold on to moisture. That's right. Gotcha. All right, that's all set. I'm just gonna set it aside for a bit and we can start building the foundation for our sauce. We noticed a trend in a lot of the Sloppy Joe recipes. They had a ton of vegetables, celery, carrots, bell peppers. It changes the texture. It wasn't what we were looking for. If I want a salad, I'll order one. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But what we decided to do was to keep the onions, but we're gonna treat the onions just like we did the beef with okay. a little bit of baking soda. Oh, okay. An eighth of a teaspoon to be exact. So I have here two teaspoons of oil. I'm gonna put this over medium heat and we'll know it's ready when the oil starts to shimmer and we're gonna add the onions. All right. Okay, so I have half an onion finely chopped. We want these onions to break down. Gotcha. Practically melt and that's what this one eighth teaspoon of baking soda is going to do, just like it did with the beef. And this only take about three to four minutes. Well, nobody wants to find a firm onion in their sloppy joe. Those onions should practically melt into the mixture and baking soda makes that really easy. Here's how. Typically when you cook onions, pectin and hemicellulose molecules from the plant cells link up into a gel that holds water and helps the onion pieces keep their shape. Hours of cooking will break down the cell walls and eventually the onion's texture will become very soft. But there is a shortcut. Baking soda is alkaline and when you add it to your finely chopped onion, it raises the mixture's pH. In an alkaline environment, the hemicellulose readily dissolves out of the cell walls and the pectin molecules are inhibited from grabbing onto each other and forming that gel. So the onions quickly turn soft and tender. And that's why baking soda is the key to our magically melting onions. All right, so it's been about three or four minutes. You see how much the onions have broken down. That would have never happened without the baking soda. And this is exactly where we need to be. All right. So to this, I'm gonna add two minced cloves of garlic for about 30 seconds until they're just fragrant. All right. To this, I'm gonna add two teaspoons of paprika. I'm gonna stir this constantly for about 30 seconds until the paprika is fragrant. A quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, an eighth teaspoon of salt, and two teaspoons of brown sugar. I'm gonna add more flavor compounds by adding a quarter cup of tomato paste. All right, I'm just gonna let this bloom a little. Three to four minutes is all we really need, and we're looking forward to get rust colored. Okay, gotcha. All right, so it's been about three minutes. Our tomato paste is a nice rusty red color. Mm. I'm gonna add the beef. Now the magic behind the consistency of the beef is making sure that it's broken down. And I'm gonna do that using a wooden spoon and just cook it until there's no longer any pink in the meat. And this should take about five minutes. Okay, so the meat is no longer pink. We've gotten exactly where we wanna be, but I'm gonna take this a step further by using the potato masher. This trick is the difference between how much meat stays on your bun versus how much meat is on your plate. You're right. Cleaning up after sloppy Joe, aren't you? This is a tidy Joe. <laughs> All right, that looks great. Ketchup is a staple item in Sloppy Joe, so we could not go without right. it. Instead, we decrease the average one cup of ketchup to a third cup. Wow, and you get more of that tomato flavor from the tomato paste that That's you added right. earlier. That's right. I'm also adding a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Okay. And a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. Nice. So we are not lacking in flavor in the no. Sloppy Joe. No. Well, already there's a huge difference in this. It's That's not right. so sloppy. 
it's not so sloppy at all. So now that the beef is cooked until it's tender and juicy, we're gonna make a slurry. And this slurry is gonna do two jobs. It's gonna act as a thickener for our sauce, and it's also going to emulsify any fat that may be in the pan from cooking the meat. So I have a half a teaspoon of cornstarch okay. and a tablespoon of water, and I'm just gonna give it a mix. I'm gonna stir in this cornstarch slurry until it coats the beef and thickens about one minute. The heat's gonna activate this cornstarch and it's gonna give us a silky texture. Mm, I've never seen this before in a sloppy joe. Okay, Bridget, these are ready. It's the prettiest joe I've ever seen. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to just give it a taste. I think you should try some too. Let's give it a taste and see if we need to add any extra flavors. Oh yeah. What do you think? I think maybe a little more vinegar. A little more a little splash vinegar. vinegar. Oh, okay. oh, that's so good. I'm gonna go a little more sugar too. All right. <gasps> mm. I think that's gonna be perfect. Let's have some sloppy joes. Oh, this is the test, right? Yes. How sloppy are they once you get them on the bun? But I love how this is clinging to the bun. And thank you for not using gourmet brioche buns or something like that. This has gotta be a squishy potato roll or something oh, yeah. like that. Here's some pickles for your joe. This is a first for me. I've never had pickles on a sloppy joe. So there's a method to this. You have to give the bun a little smash. Now this is the point where half of it would have dropped out onto the plate. All right. Mm -hmm. That is so tender. Very tender. Really well balanced. It's super tomatoey. It's still in the bun. It's still in the bun. Sweet and spicy. You know what's missing? What's that? The chandelier of orange <laughs> fat that traditionally starts to drip down your hands as you eat it. And that's because the cornstarch that you added there really holds on, it emulsifies basically that, that fat that was in the pan. That's right. I think Joe walked a few blocks uptown. This is so much better than I've ever had. Now you don't have to fight with Joe. Mm. If you'd like to make the greatest sloppy joes at home, well, it starts by tossing ground beef with a little baking soda slurry, and then meanwhile, saute onions and baking soda until those onions practically melt. Then stir in a little brown sugar, spices, and tomato paste. Brown the beef, then finish the sauce with ketchup, red wine vinegar, and Worcestershire, and then thicken it with a little cornstarch. So from America's Test Kitchen, the overhaul, but still so classic, sloppy joe. Can we even call it Sloppy Joe anymore? Nope. Formerly known as Sloppy <laughs> Joe. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later. <laughs>